Adams Free SDA Church in Forestville, Maryland. Please mute yourselves as you come on. So I'm happy to introduce to everyone Sister Arminda. Hi, thank, thank you, Natasha. Um, I guess I'll wait for you to put up the, um, or is it already up, the PowerPoint? One moment, yes. Okay. <laughs> Share my screen. Are there any videos in your PowerPoint? No, no, not at all. There you go. Um, so today I'm going to just have a short talk about hydrotherapy and some of its benefits. Um, I chose this verse um, in 2 Kings 5.10, because I think it represents what hydrotherapy is. If we recall the story of Naaman, um, when Elisha asked him to wash in the Jordan, Naaman walked away angry because it was just too simple. Um, and hydrotherapy, I think, um, really is a simple treatment, although it does take some effort. And of course, it takes um, cooperation with God. And so I'm excited to talk about that this morning. Um, so what I'll be speaking about today, I'm going to introduce myself um, and the work that I do. I'm going to talk briefly about the history of hydrotherapy, um, the benefits or indications of it, uh, the definition of it, some methods and the goals of it, and some contraindications and precautions because we do want to use this skillfully um, and then talk about some resources where you can learn more and give some testimonies of how I've been able to use hydrotherapy um, in my life and, and other testimonies that I've heard from others. Um, so next slide. I forgot I'm supposed to be saying that to you, Natasha. <laughs> and the next slide. Um, so again, just to reintroduce myself, my name is Arminda Perch, and I'm a clinical social worker in the state of Virginia. Um, I'm currently working towards my independent licensure. Um, I returned to school after many years to get a, a second degree. So I recently graduated with my MSW, and I'm currently working towards uh, my hours towards my professional registration. Um, I also have certificates in trauma and and social work practice, um, horticultural therapy, and pastoral care. Uh, my particular areas of interest are trauma, PTSD, and related disorders, uh, racial trauma, depression, anxiety, and pain. Uh, my approach is cognitive be behavioral, which deals a lot with what we do and how we think. Um, I also consider myself experiential because I love to practice things in session and give you homework outside of session. Um, and as Natasha was saying that we discussed this morning, you know, there's a lot of healing arts in the mental health field. And as Sister White says, not all of these arts, heaven approves. Um, but because there's this openness, I think the medical missionary work uh, remains a tremendous wedge, particularly in this field. And so I think we need more representatives that are uh, promoting God's way. Um, and we've been, my husband and I have been 25 years in the ministry, most of that being Bible workers, and that is indeed our first love. Um, we've been married 24 years, but this year will be my 25th wedding anniversary. Um, we have two adult sons, and I admittedly, my favorite um, uh, topics to study is actually prophecy. Um, I do have a website that's currently in development. Um, if you go to the, my website now, it'll say, under construction, um, but it'll be up soon. Uh, but here's just my contact information. Um, Heal CCC stands for Health, um, Heal Christian Center uh, for Counseling. And so that will be the name of my uh, independent practice when that's up and running. 
Um, so one of the things that I really take to heart is what Sister White talks about in terms of our true education. You know, as pilgrims in on this earth, we are students and learners of the Most High. And Sister White says that true education is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental and the spiritual powers. And I keep not saying next slide, Natasha, I'm so sorry. Um, the, is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental and the spiritual powers. Next slide. <clears throat> and we see this also reflected in, in many places in the word of God. But I'd like to read about it in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, where the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, which is the physical, a living sacrifice, holy, which is the spiritual, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and there is the mental. Um, and then in verse 2, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds and we know that our minds and bodies have a strong sympathy with one another and so the Bible uh, uh, asks us to have transformed minds next slide and it's with this idea, you know, that, you know, that I have just come up with this acronym. You'll see a lot of different acronyms in, in the world of medical missionary um, and acronyms that represent those eight doctors. And so um, I have an acronym that is TRANSFORM and that T stands for Trust in Divine Power. The R is REST, A is Abundance of Water, N is Nutrition, S is Self Mastery, F is Fitness, O is Open Air. R is rays of sunshine, and I added in mental hygiene, not as an additional doctor, but just knowing that uh, that mind and body are sympathy, and those eight doctors have a lot to do with how we are taking care of our bodies. Um, next slide. And Sister White actually talks quite a bit about mental hygiene and mind cure um, in the spirit of prophecy. Next slide. So uh, if you're interested in what she says, she does say in the book, Mind, Character, Personality, um, she gives six very specific practices and focuses where, for our mental being um, and uh, have, having an aim and purpose, uh, a proper diet, contemplating nature, which is God's uh, second lesson book next to the Bible, uh, prayer and study of the Bible, Meditation of the work of Christ, especially in the final scenes, as we see in Hebrews chapter 12, that we're encouraged to do, as well as keeping our body in good physical condition. And so I think that uh, next, next slide, keeping our body in good physical condition is what the effective use of water is all about. We know the quote, pure air sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, and use of water and trust in divine power. These are the eight doctors that will empower us to keep our minds and bodies under subjection. Next slide. So we'll move into talking about this doctor, abundance of water. Next slide. Now, Sister White, um, you know, um, I recently am conducting a, a workshop at our church about hydrotherapy, and I compiled a list of quotes of, of the use of water and her, um, uh, uh, you know, talking about hydrotherapy. And I have like 11 pages worth of quotes. And so she has a lot to say about us using water for our health. And in the Ministry of Healing, she says, in health and in sickness, Pure water is one of heaven's choicest blessings. Its proper use promotes health. It is the beverage which God provided to quench the thirst of animals and man, drunk freely, so we have an internal application of water. Um, she says it helps to supply the necessities of the system and assist nature to resist disease. And the external application of water 
is one of the easiest and most satisfactory ways of regulating the circulation of the blood. And we know that the book of Leviticus tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Next slide. Um, the use of hydrotherapy is actually quite ancient in our Earth's history. Um, Hippocrates, who was the father of modern medicine, in which every uh, uh, medical doctor takes an Hippocratic oath, um, but he used hot and cold water immersion to treat many diseases in the earlier centuries. Um, the ancient Romans had public baths that they used for hygiene. Um, they, ancient Romans actually lived well into their 70s and part of that was because of their hygiene practices. Um, and it, and in, throughout the empire, they developed hot and cold springs. If we remember the message in Revelation 3 that talks about the, the springs, uh, with the, or talks about the hot and cold for the church of Laodicea, you know, that's, that was speaking about features of the Roman empire with those hot and cold springs and the, the healing that uh, those waters brought. Um, during the Middle Ages, there was a, a, a walking away from hygienic practices, um, but after the Black Death or the, the bubonic plague pandemic, people became interested again in hydrotherapy and it began to make a, a little resurgence. And in the 19th century, um, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, President, he was an individual who repopularized hydrotherapy throughout Europe. And it was Dr. John Harvey Kellogg in our church through the Battle Creek Sanitarium who popularized hydrotherapy here in the United States. And the Battle Creek Sanitarium was very famous. Next slide. Individuals like Amelia Earhart, J.C. Penney's, and even Franklin Delano Roosevelt came to Kellogg Sanitarium for hydrotherapy and other rational treat treatments. And so he became uh, quite popular there at uh, Battle Creek. Um, and hydrotherapy um, was remains an effective treatment. Next slide. Good morning, Pleasant Sabbath. Happy. And uh, the popularity of, of hydrotherapy really waned. Um, and it wasn't because hydrotherapy was dis you know, was discovered to be ineffective. Um, but the reason why hydrotherapy waned was because antibiotics were introduced as well as other medical advances that were able to achieve the same sort of uh, treatment results. Um, and there was also a trend towards less labor intensive treatments. Um, and so it wasn't because it was ineffective that hydrotherapy became out of practice. Next slide. And this, this I think is interesting because Sister White says that the use of natural remedies requires an amount of care and effort that many are not willing to give. And so when we think about hydrotherapy practice and even the other eight doctors, it requires us to cooperate with God, not just in the decision-making, but also in the physical effort um, that needs to be exerted um, to partake and engage in, in these healing methods. Um, and Sister White, continues to say that nature's process of healing and upbuilding, it's gradual. And to the impatient, it seems slow. You know, with hydrotherapy, it's not just one treatment necessarily, and I feel all better. We, we often have to do multiple treatments over the course of many days. And she says the surrender of hurtful indulgences requires sacrifice. But in the end, it will be found that nature untrammeled does her work wisely and well. And those who persevere in obedience to her laws will reap the ward in health of body and health of mind. And again, we see that mind-body connection. Next slide. 
So I'm really excited to just mention these many benefits of hydrotherapy. Um, these, this list is not as big as all of the benefits that are in these two studies that I have listed here. And I have references at the end of the slide if you wanna read further. Um, but it does so many things. It can relieve aches and pains, um, including fibromyalgia, arthritis and migraines. And fibromyalgia in particular is one of those conditions that it's really hard to find relief for. And so hydrotherapy is a wonderful pain reliever in the body that can support that. Um, it supports your hormonal system, such as menstrual irregularities. Um, it boosts immunity and supports your lymph flow. It speeds the healing process, reduces scarring and, and tissue damage. Um, it increases the flexibility of our muscles and joints, and it improves our overall general fitness. It increases our vigor and vitality, and it improves our general sense of well-being. And so your quality of life um, can be impacted with the use of hydrotherapy. It improves our digestive tract functions. It is a great detoxifier, can also be include for um, can also be helpful for weight loss. It improves circulation, cardiac function, and blood pressure. It helps with insomnia and other sleep issues. It's a soother of the nervous system, improves mood states and memory. Um, so that's why that's where my interest really got peaked when it came with hydrotherapy um, because it has really positive mental health effects. Um, it can also decrease tension and general fatigue. And these were studies that were uh, liter extensive literature reviews um, of all the research that has been done on hydrotherapy throughout the years. And these studies were conducted in 2018 and 2014. Next slide. And I just mentioned that because we've had this knowledge of the benefits of water for over a hundred years. You know, Sister White simply told us that the Lord has taught us that the great efficacy for healing lies in a proper use of water. And she says these treatments should be given skillfully. And she also says in health and in sickness, Pure water is one of heaven's choicest blessings. You know, she actually says on the Sabbath, we can pray for choicest blessings. So being a choice blessing is particularly special. Um, its proper use promotes health. And what I read earlier, it can be an internal treatment or an external treatment. Next slide. And so the specific definition of hydrotherapy is this. It's an external or internal application of water in any of its three forms. In its solid form, it can be ice, um, uh, in its liquid form, or vapor. Um, and in these forms, used in these forms to promote health or for the treatment of disease or trauma with various temperatures, pressure, duration, and site, and site meaning the specific location of the treatment. Sometimes hydrotherapy can be a whole body treatment or it can be localized, just treating certain parts of the body. Next slide. So again, hydrotherapy can be used externally or internally. Some examples of external treatments include sits baths, douche, a spa, hot tub, whirlpool, steam baths. My favorite is the Russian steam bath, um, a sauna, shower baths, a hot foot bath. I think it was Dr. Agatha Thrash said, if there's any treatment that you learn in hydrotherapy, if there's any one treatment, let it be the hot foot bath. Um, there's packs, there's poultices and fomentations, wraps, pool exercises, um, friction rubs and massage. And examples of internal use of water is of course, staying hydrated and getting um, the appropriate amount of water intake, um, drinking herbal teas and mineral waters. Um, there's there's uh, lithium waters, I forget in which state, uh, but the native 
and Native Americans used to call it like laughing springs um, because lithium can actually improve your mood. And so um, it's a very valuable water. Um, inhalations are internal applications um, are using irrigations as well as administering enemas and colonics. So as you can see, you know, hydrotherapy involves a variety of treatments. Next slide. And hydrotherapy also pairs nicely with herbal medicine preparations, um, such as in use of plasters. I know mustard plasters are quite popular. Um, poultices, masks, wraps, um, baths such as like mud baths or paraffin wax baths, salt glows, alcohol rubs and aromatherapy, the use of essential oils. Um, or they can also have thermic applications where it's not, uh, uh, where it's, it's paired with, with things like objects or electricity, UV or infrared light. And when I was first reading about electricity, I thought, huh, water and, water and electricity doesn't seem like that would be a good combination. But it was actually something that was used in, uh, uh, in the Battle Creek Sanitarium. And even Ellen White mentions her use of the electric bath. Next slide. And when you're using hydrotherapy, there are a couple of goals involved. Um, one, hydrotherapy normalizes the quantity of blood that is circulating through a given area during a given period of time by manipulating its circulation. And this is just another way that, you know, when we use hot, that opens up the blood vessels and it brings blood into that part of your body. And when we use cold, it constricts the vessels and that either keeps blood you know, there or it prevents additional blood from moving into that part of the body. So we can manipulate that uh, circulation um, in a skillful way. Another goal of hydrotherapy is to carry heat or cold to enhance the body's ability to heal. Um, the blood carries all kinds of nutrients, and I have a, a slide in a moment that talks about that. Um, and by the movement of the blood, we can we can impact many of the body's systems, the nervous system, the circulatory system, the endocrine, the integumentary system, um, the digestive and the musculoskeletal systems all can benefit from hydrotherapy. Next slide. And why water is so powerful is because our are like our bodies are made up and our body organs are made up of large percentages of water. Um, a person's body weight is made up two thirds um, of water. Um, and, you know, so when somebody's even dehydrated, it's a very serious problem um, and more serious than people realize. And so water plays an important role uh, for us physi physiologically. And as we can see on this slide, um, the blood is 94% water. Next slide. And so when we impact that circulation with the use of hydrotherapy, we move the blood. And when we move the blood, not only do we move the water, um, but we can move the red blood cells and the white blood cells to areas that they need to go. Um, they can also be increased with the use of water. Um, platelets, proteins, oxygen, antibodies, um, the removal of waste, products and minerals. Um, and so there's a lot that happens when we impact the body's circulation. Next slide. And when we think about where the blood travels in the body, this is actually a picture of just the capillary systems that exist in the body. And what the capillaries are is they're just delicate blood vessels that exist throughout your body. And it's through the capillary system that uh, that the nutrients and the oxygen and the waste products of the blood are moved. And so when, so you can see that by using hydrotherapy, we can impact 
the entire body. And I just thought that was a nice visual. Next slide. Um, but we absolutely want to be skillful with our use of hydrotherapy. So it is definitely something that we want to gain some training in, as was, uh, as was the counsel given to us in the spirit of prophecy. We want to use it skillfully. Um, we don't want to just, you know, w go out and just use uh, you know, hot and cold temperatures without knowledge. Um, some of the contraindications for uh, hydrotherapy use is, you know, use on individuals who have advanced vascular disease or arterial insufficiency um, or advanced diabetes. And the reason being is because if the quality of the blood vessel is impaired, then it impacts its ability to transport blood. And so we have to be very careful with temperatures um, if we're working with individuals who have advanced stage um, uh, blood vessel diseases. Um, fragile skin or skin conditions that are irritated by moisture. Um, areas of numbness. Again, when you don't have a lot of sensation, which can happen in diabetes and vascular disease, um, uh, it can indicate a larger problem or a more advanced problem. Um, chest pain, uh, severe angina, um, and mainly because that is typically a symptom of an emergency. And so we want to be sure that um, we get that checked out. Um, severe respiratory function. Um, I'm an individual that has asthma and I've had it, you know, since the age of four. It doesn't bother me so much um, like it used to be. I grew up very sick with asthma. Um, but there are times that if, um, and again, I haven't experienced it in many years, but like if I'm having an attack type of situation, um, hot and cold can actually make it worse. And so um, we want to listen to to people when they when they when they tell us that they, they think that these treatments you know, may be too much for them. Um, if somebody's in danger of bleeding or hemorrhage, and of course, if they're unconscious. Next slide. Some precautions that we do want to take um, is to avoid hydrotherapy treatments too soon after having a meal. You know, when we eat, our blood rushes to our stomach to help the digestion. Um, and so we, we don't want to compete with that with a hydrotherapy treatment. So we want to give our stomachs times to rest. Um, if the client has a fear of water, uh, you don't want to traumatize them, particularly young children um, and even older adults um, can develop a fear of water. And so we want to um, be cautious and gentle when we're dealing with individuals. Um, if a client has aversion to being touched, um, hydrotherapy, some of the treatments can be quite intimate. And for many of the treatments, it's going to be important for us to follow counsel that says that women need to treat women and men need to treat men. Um, and just to mention with, again, about touch is, you know, some individuals may have a history of trauma. And so being touched by someone else needs to happen with permission at all times. And so we want to be gentle um, when we're engaging in uh, uh, touch type treatments. That's true with massage as well. Um, if a client has epilepsy, <clears throat> Because that extreme hot and cold for some individuals can actually trigger a seizure. Um, cancer, um, if, we're, if not used appropriately or if it's used in a very localized way in the area of the cancer, it can exacerbate um, a, metast um, a metastasis. So we want to be careful. Uh, pregnancy, it may not be appropriate to, to heat up the, the fetus. Some treatments can be quite intense. Um, and if, if a person has a device like hearing aids or pacemakers or, you know, various chronic conditions, um, we, we may have to take special precautions. It's really important that if you're wanting to be a, a practicer of hydrotherapy, that with your clients, you um, conduct a thorough health history so that you know what precautions you might need to take um, with the treatments that you choose. Next slide. 
So some resources that can help get you started. Um, I included these books and they're also listed in the reference section. I don't know if Natasha, if you can just share the PowerPoint that I sent to you. Um, it has the references there. Um, but Hydrotherapy, Simple Treatments for Common Ailments is a really super simple book. And it discusses things like the, the, the contraindications and the benefits of conditions that you could use it for. Um, the, if you want uh, to practice with family and friends, I think that's really a wonderful book. Um, if you want to get a little bit more advanced in your knowledge, I think the Modern Hydrotherapy for the Massage Therapist is a really, really good book. This was a book that was recommended um, by the, the, the trainer in the class, classes that I've taken, um, who was a professor at Weimar for their massage and hydrotherapy programs. Um, and what I do like about this book is that it talks about how to use herbal medications and essential oils um, to, together with hydrotherapy. Um, and the last book, The Hydrotherapy Theory and Technique, that gets in a lot into the background of, of the theory of hydrotherapy. And that could be interesting to you um, to get into more depth with that. Next slide. Some resources, if uh, websites, if you want to know more, you can Google traditional hydrotherapy. Has a ton of treatments and discussions. Um, a lot of the treatments that are on this particular website come from Dr. Kellogg's book um, about hydrotherapy that's available on Google Books. Um, another website that is nice is Hydro for COVID, and that is a high, that is a, a protocol for individuals who are suffering and struggling against COVID. Um, also, UT Pines has the COVID-19 protocol, and hydroreference.com has a lot of uh, simple treatments and explanations about hydrotherapy. So if you wanted to just go online and learn about it, I do recommend those sites. Next slide. And there's also places where you can receive training. Um, Hydrotherapy Hub is actually the place where I got trained and they did everything virtually and it was it was more intensive than I expected it to be. Um, I'm glad that it was, because I think that's part of the reason why I'm so excited about it. Um, the class is fairly affordable. Uh, there is an investment with equipment that we need to make, uh, depending on the treatments that we decide we want to use, um, but it's absolutely worth it. Um, we have the life and health e-courses that are 100% um, online. You have Wildwood down in Georgia. They have an online course as well as at times throughout the year, they have uh, weekly workshops or classes that you can actually go on site for. Um, LIGHT, which I forget what that acronym stands for, uh, but they have an online training program. And the Life is Medicine Institute um, they have an on-site extensive program, and uh, they're very committed to training Seventh-day Adventists with hydrotherapy. And all of these resources are um, uh, developed by Seventh-day Adventists. Next slide. And I just wanted to share some testimonies uh, with my own use of hydrotherapy. Uh, my husband, who has chronic back pain, you know, um, and it's becoming more frequent where he has these flare-ups that really keep him homebound. And it can be for a week or a little over a week at a time. And the Russian steam bath has been extremely effective in arresting that flare-up um, with, with one treatment and definitely by two treatments. Um, and so we've been blessed to be able to support his back pain more effectively now. Um, my allergies this year are cured. Um, the last two years I have had really incredible trouble with allergies and I used a steam inhalation treatment and I was very, um, it was effort. I was doing it three times a day. I was using um, eucalyptus oil as well as onion um, in my steam. And, um, but after 
uh, a little over a month. Um, I effectually say I am cured this year. I have zero problems with my allergies and they were severe, even triggering my asthma. I was walking uh, the other day outside and I was just praising and thanking the Lord uh, for how clear my allergies are this year. Um, and I also had COVID-19 earlier in this year and I actually had it before I was trained in hydrotherapy. And, but we, my husband and I happened to, to have purchased a Russian steam bath and we did the best that we could. And my, my fever came and went with that Russian steam bath. Um, and I presented with my COVID with incredible body aches. Um, and after two treatments, my body aches were, um, were gone. And so it was very effective for me um, with my COVID symptoms. Um, at church, we shared some testimonies about um, the cold friction rub being used for fever reduction. Natasha had a testimony, I believe it was with her niece, um, who was moving towards that 104 degree mark, um, which is an emergency. And she was able to use a cold friction rub to keep that at bay. And there was another mother at the church um, who did the same using the cold friction uh, rub to keep her child's fever at bay. Um, and safe a leg saved from amputation. And this was um, a testimony that was actually shared in the training. And I forget the name of the individual, but it was, a, it was a conference administrator whose leg was not healing well. And, and as a result, the doctors were saying, well, if it doesn't get, you know, begin to heal within a certain time frame, we're going to need to amputate it. And he began to do hot foot baths. And very shortly after, his leg began to heal. And so he saved himself from an, an amputation. And so don't not underestimate the effort um, that you make if you decide to use hydrotherapy uh, for health as well as to treat disease. And the uh, next slide. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, quotes. It's found in Acts of the Apostles, where Sister White says that God wishes us to have mastery over ourselves, but he cannot help us without our consent and cooperation. So even in any medical missionary work that we do, we must be co-laborers together with God. And she says, the divine spirit works through the powers and faculties given to man. Of ourselves, we are not able to bring the purposes and desires and inclinations into harmony with the will of God. But if we are willing to be made willing, the Savior will accomplish this for us. And so if hydrotherapy is something that seems interesting to you, um, as you need encouragement to you know, do multiple treatments and to make that effort, um, when, especially when the treatments might, might um, require uh, labor, um, pray and ask God to continue to be willing to be made willing, you know, to submit to his methods and he will, the promises bless and heal you. So just last slide is just a references slide. Um, so if you're interested again in the books or looking at any of the information that I discussed, you can uh, find some of that in these, in, in these resources. Right, and that is the end. Thank you so much, Sister Perch. This was Can you hear me now? I hear you now, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Sister Perch. This was most informative, and thank you for sharing. Um, testimonies also. At this time, we're going to open it up for questions. If anyone has a question, please um, raise your hand. We'll go ahead and ask you to unmute. Well, while um, people are coming with questions, I want to take this moment to just let you know, for those who are local, tomorrow we're going to uh, be with the Beehive Ministry and doing a hydrotherapy, hydrotherapy practicum. 
So if you are interested, you can just um, contact me. I'll drop my email address and telephone number in the chat. Okay, nature's way. Please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Natasha. Hello. It's, Fl it's Flavia. Oh, uh, hi, Flavia. Go, go ahead, please. Nature's uh, way had their hand up. Can you ask your question after them? Nature's way, are you there? Yes, good morning. Good morning, sis. I appreciate your presentation a lot. I've learned a lot. And I'd love to learn much, much more. I, too, want to believe that water really works for health. Um, I can remember, you know, if, if, for instance, I haven't had a bad for a day, I feel so luggy, I feel so dead, I can't move around, I'm wondering what is happening to my system and what is happening. And I tell you, when I go and I get my cold water bath, I feel like I wanna move mountain, I can do all my shirts for the day and I feel alive. So yeah. I too can prove that water really works for the body. Yeah, oh, thank you. I thank would you. love to know oh. when, to use the what water different from the cold water if in case there is a, a, a complaint. You know, yeah. thank, thank you for that question and thank you for your testimony. Um, you know, uh, cold water is, is very stimulating, you know, and so when our systems are depressed and need to be woken up, so to speak, um, that's when cold water treatments can be appropriate. So like for mental health, for example, um, depression uh, uh, can, can, can um, be helped cold water treatments tend to be more helpful. Um, warm water treatments tend to be more, uh, uh, I don't know if I want to say soothing, but tend to be more, um, what's the word that I'm thinking of, tend to be uh, more analgesic, um, which can be pain reducing and also tends to be uh, more I guess for lack of a better word, depressant to the system. Um, so it slows things down. That's just to say it slows things down. It's less stimulating. So when you have like muscle tension, for example, um, you would you actually want to loosen that. So warm water treatments might be better for something like that. Warm water treatments are, are good or hot water treatments are good for pain. Um, neutral treatments actually are very good for sleep you know, and insomnia. And, you know, sometimes a warm water treatment can be good for depression. You know, for example, if your depression is because you are overloaded with work, you know, um, uh, you're tired, that actually might be more appropriate for uh, a warm water treatment. You know, Sister White makes a statement in her writings that, um, you know, the majority of the time, warm water treatments are better. Um, and Dr. Kellogg used to say that she can um, create her own treatments when she comes to the, the sanitarium. So I think as individuals become open to maybe experimenting on different types of treatments, um, you can kind of find out for yourself which works better for you in certain types of conditions. Now, if you're trying to treat a trauma or trying to treat a disease, um, then you're gonna want to, uh, again, be a lot more skillful in understanding um, which treatments are appropriate for which conditions. Um, so you definitely want to, you know, do more study. But I think people should be able to decide for themselves um, how something um, helps their body. Um, so, you know, be open to experimenting with both hot and cold treatments. Excellent. Sister Flavia, please go ahead and ask your question. Um, the question I wanted to ask was, uh, you just mentioned about tomorrow's um, session. Is it going to be on Zoom? No, unfortunately, that session is in person only, but that's um, something that I'll definitely take as a suggestion how to do it on Zoom for those of us who are not um, in the local area. 
Oh, okay, thank you. Oli, please go ahead and unmute. Yeah, I'm trying to find out how to use um hot that for your Veracruz beans. Say that again. How do you use the hot bag for your varicose veins? Right. The, the interesting thing about varicose veins, and I'm glad that you asked that question, because varicose veins are also paired with like, there's thinner skin um, on the top of those veins. So you don't actually want to use extreme temperatures when you're working with varicose veins. And sometimes that can also be a, a, a vein that doesn't carry the blood very strongly. So you're gonna to wanna to use more moderate temperatures and not the extreme hot and cold um, over those particular areas. And you're also, wanna, you're also not going to want to use um, extreme friction um, because of the, the thinness of the skin over those areas. But certainly you can just adjust the temperatures. One of the, the you know, Diabetes, a lot of people, for example, live with diabetes. And the only reason I mention it is because in a lot of the treatments, there's precautions for diabetics. And one of the precautions are gentle, uh, more, more um, less extremes in temperature. So 104 degrees uh, would be the hot that you might can get to, uh, but again, it's gonna be as hot as you can stand, but you, you're not gonna wanna go over 104 degrees. Um, and you also don't want it to be more than a 20 degree difference in the temperature extreme. And so if your hot is 104, then you wanna use um, no less than 84 as your cold. You know, And if you use a hot of 100, then you can go down to an 80. Okay, so you don't wanna use extremes in temperature, um, but 104 uh, tends to be, um, tends to keep the treatment mild. I have a okay, question. Thank you very much. Ooh, Sister Poncia, can you hold one yes. moment? Um, iPhone, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Good morning. Oh. Okay, I'm not sure. Um, good morning. Um, my name is Leola, and I appreciate all the valuable information that you gave out. I have a recent injury, which happened on the 4th of July, and... Um, I fell, but I landed on my right side, my left side, but my right leg is excruciating and pain only when I try to stand on it. So I'm wondering, did I stretch a muscle? But here's what I've done already. I gave myself a hot foot bath and Good. then I put the ice pack on my hip under where the um, pain was and then on top. Would you recommend anything else? Now, I was going to say a hot foot bath is absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, the, the key is to, to continue to do it multiple times, you know, as you continue to have symptoms. Um, heat is very good for musculoskeletal type of pain, um, a Russian steam bath. Um, if you can um, take the intensity of that um, can be helpful as well. But yeah, it sounds like you're doing good. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Sister Veronica, go ahead and unmute yourself. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Thank you for the presentation and I'm looking forward to I don't hear her, or is that just me? No, it was my GPS. I had to drive to Pennsylvania to a funeral. Sorry. Um, question was, in your experience, um, either with your classmates or your um, in doing Zoom, have you noticed, what is the common, like some I'm not catching errors. What are some common errors or errors of, that you see doing when they're trying to implement hydrotherapy? Common mistakes, rather. Common mistakes. 
Um, well, well, I, I want to I want to say that I, I was trained earlier this year, um, and I'm a type of personality where um, you know I learn, I go into spaces, and <laughs> and I practice, uh, and and so um, I I know a lot, and and but I haven't actually been at it for a long time, so I, I have had some experience with that in my training, and even in you know when sharing it with others. I think the biggest mistake is that people don't learn that aren't practicing, you know, the techniques. Um, they treat hydrotherapy as maybe a novelty, and so um, it doesn't become thorough. Um, another thing that I, I've seen and that people talked about is, um, you know, they, they want some of the treatments they want to just um, like a pill, you know, they want the relief to happen instantly. Um, and that's not the way that the treatments work. And so being willing to put in that effort to keep going again in the will of God and, and cooperating with him to keep going um, becomes an important piece of you seeing the positive impact of the of of uh, these treatments. Thank, Thank you. you, Sister Poncia. You had your hand raised earlier. Please go ahead and ask your question. Are you there? Yeah, I'm trying to get unmuted. We can hear you. Go ahead. You heard me? Yes. Mm. Okay, good. My question is I have tender tendonitis and um can the hot and cold water work, the hypothetical work for it? Yeah, it's um certainly um ten, you know, tendonitis has to do with inflammation. Yeah. And there are uh, cold treatments um, and there are hot treatments that can be effective. I think um, Natasha mentioned, I don't know if she mentioned it in, in, the, in, this, um, in this webinar or when we were just talking. Um, I woke like up late. That was the thing. I'm so sorry. I woke up late. I was like, oh, no. Um, well, I, I was just going to mention like fomentations can be very good. Uh, for inflammation, so can internal treatments, um, like maybe using an herbal tea or something like that, um, that can be supportive. Um, so yeah, uh, inflammation, that would fall under like, you know, inflammation. And so you can use treatments um, that can be effective for inflammation. Okay. So can I just do it twice a day or just as often as I can? I would say once or twice a day, uh, fomentations, depending on the, the type of equipment you have, um, can be labor intensive. So I think like uh, in, in my class, a lot of times for those kinds of treatments, intense heat treatments, you know, once or twice a day was what was recommended. Okay, thank you. Okay. So um, we will close out. This will be our last question. Um, DK iPhone X, please go ahead and unmute. Good morning. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. And I heard you mention earlier about pool exercises. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, you know, water, and I didn't talk about the different properties of water, but Water has a lot of properties like buoyancy, you know, that really create resistance. And, and so being in a pool, uh, buoyancy also uh, creates, uh, you know, that weightlessness quality that happens in water. So maybe individuals who couldn't otherwise um, practice exercise, you know, that, that doctor um, can do so in the water. Um, and the resistance that the water provides, you know, can help you exercise your muscle. Another thing that a uh, pool can do is it could be a cold pool or it can be a hot pool. So it can offer some of those thermal effects of hot or cold or neutral or warm. Um, and and uh, physical therapy um, 
a, if you have had physical therapy in the past, you'll find that some physical therapists use hydrotherapy and they use a uh, pool exercises in rehabilitation. Um, so pools are a great way um, to use hydrotherapy. We don't typically think of hydrotherapy as things like being in the pool, but it absolutely, um, you know, gives you all the benefits that water can offer. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you so much. And th with that last question, we'll close up for today. I want to just thank everyone for joining and thank Sister Perch, Sister Arminda, especially for just um, sharing with us this knowledge and all the resources that are available. Um, we're definitely going to follow up for those who are unable to make the practicum this weekend. Uh, this Sunday because um, these are the skills we need to develop while there is a time of relative peace so that we can use them to as an entering wedge to benefit others as we continue to have times of crises. So thank you everyone again for joining us and I uh, will close out with a word of prayer. Hi Heavenly Father. Thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for bringing us to another Sabbath day. Lord, um, let us please all absorb and put into use the information shared today. Let us find avenues and ways to practice and work with others. And Lord, more than anything, let us put away self and have your will be the lead of our life. Lord wherever we are in our various journeys, it's our prayer today that your name will be glorified in our lives and in our spheres of influence when we are around others. Lord, be with um, the speaker of the hour and everyone on this call, those who will also watch it at a later point in time. Um, we thank you and we praise you on this Sabbath day. This is our prayer in your precious name. That will be done. Amen. Amen. Thank you again. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye and have a great Sabbath. And for those for whom Sabbath is already closed, have a good beginning of your week. Okay. Thank you. We'll talk to you very Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Happy day. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Bye, everyone. If there's someone here who's not on our email listserv, please just drop your email in the chat and